back on the roof. So we got a complaint from the residentials over there saying that there is a crazy loud noise happening intermittently over here coming somewhere on this roof. Uh, all the equipment's just on this roof. There's nothing up there uh, except for that exhaust fan. But of course the noise isn't happening right now. So I'm going to pretty much go through every unit and turn everything on and make sure it's not making any noise. And I wonder if that fan's running. I might need to get a ladder up here. But anyway, uh, that exhaust fan's running fine. It's not making any noise. I don't know if that one's running or not. I'm going to have to check that. So yeah, but anyway, um, yep. So here we go. Okay, so I've been cycling cool, heat, and fan on every single unit. And there's uh, six of them. And then two exhaust fans. Both exhaust fans are fine. I went up that sketchy ladder. So we're going to go ahead and cycle this one. We'll start with heat. Oh, I think we found our problem. Well, I think we found our noise. So, uh, yeah, we're going to check that out, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and cycle the cooling, make sure that there's, there's nothing wrong with cooling. All right, cool. So cooling's fine. So it looks like we got a messed up inducer draft motor. So let's see if there's just something stuck in there or if it's messed up, which it's probably messed up because, yeah, it spins. So let's see what kind of amp draws it's doing, but it looks like we're gonna have to change out that inducer. Okay, so we're just gonna cover all our bases. Uh, we just wanna double check all this stuff because I don't wanna change this and then have another problem. So I'm gonna check the run capacitor. I'm pretty sure it's fine, but we're just gonna check it just in case. Uh, so it's supposed to be at four micro, uh, microfarads or farads. I don't know how you pronounce that. I've always been calling it microfarads and someone made fun of me. So I think it's farads. Farid. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it. MFDs. And it's good. So that's not the problem. Um, one of the things I want to check is I want to see if I'm getting proper voltage. I believe this is a 240 system. Uh, it could be a 208, so we want to double check that. So we're going to open this up and check. Okay, so we got this thing uh, fired up uh, or it's hot. Uh, we want to just make sure we're getting the proper voltage. So it's supposed to be 208. So we're right at 210 at the contactor. Let's go ahead and check our transformer and see where we're at there. And this is just because it's a different point of contact. We're at 210. Okay. And then let's see if we can get into our line one on our circuit board. Yep, we're at 210. So it looks like our voltages are normal. So I would say that motor's probably messed up. So, okay, so we verified that we have proper voltages going going in and out and whatnot. So let's just make sure that we're getting proper voltage to the combustion motor. Uh, so that's gonna be on line two and then CM, which is right here on the board. I don't know if you can see that. So we unplugged it, so we shouldn't be getting no noise and we got our meter connected to it. And we're going to go ahead and set it to voltage. We got it jumped between uh, W and R. So let's power it up, see what's up. So yeah, we're getting 210 volts from the board. So I usually check that because sometimes you got power, they have the right voltage going in, but there could be a corroded relay uh, and you might not be getting enough power coming out. Because uh, even though it, it might still be fine where it'll run, it could have been the cause. So I don't want to put a new motor if the uh, board's not putting out the proper voltage, then I would suggest replacing both. Um, but anyway, it's looking like it's a dead uh, motor. I'm just gonna ohm it out for giggles. Let's take a look, see what we got. Okay, so we're ohming it out. Um, and I pretty much have nothing. It's like 0.1-ish. So yeah, that, that motor's dead. So we're gonna go ahead and order up a new inducer draft motor or combustion motor. Um, and get that thing replaced because that's what's making the noise and that's what's, you know, the problem. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect the heat. Uh, that way it doesn't keep making the noise. That way they'll at least have air conditioning. So, yep. Okay, so we're back. Same day. We got our 
motor. And here's a little tip uh, when you're going up a ladder with these. You take your bungee cord and stick them in there. And now you have a nice little tote. Just put it around your shoulder and go up the ladder. So, little trick I've learned. Uh, anyway, we got our OEM motor. It's uh, factory authorized. So we're gonna go ahead and change this out. So first thing we gotta do is we need to cut these zip ties, isolate the wires, take that thing out and put in the new one, plug it all in, and hopefully it works. So we're gonna do that. Okay, so for these carrier units, um, this tends to get in the way. So all you do is you just take the one 516 screw out right there, and then it just slides right out. So if you ever need to get to the burner box, uh, the burner assembly or whatnot, that's how you do it. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to get to. So um, now we need to go ahead and cut off these zip ties because we need to isolate our wires. So this, this doesn't have a pressure switch, but it's got this little thing here where it measures, you know, it, how fast the motor's spinning. If it doesn't reach a certain, uh, certain cycles, it uh, considers it as faulty and it won't uh, ignite, kind of like a pressure switch. So, yeah. And then that goes, plugs into there, so we'll go ahead and unplug that. And then line two right here. And then uh, CM, which is this purple one. Okay, and then we have a yellow wire which goes into the run cap and then we have a brown wire which goes into the run cap so okay so we removed that we need to get this yellow wire out now it's all looped and around so i don't know where the heck is it there it is and then of course it's getting caught on everything there we go and i believe it goes into the run cap i'm not sure though yeah it does I think it's this one. Yeah. Uh, big old mess of wires, pretty much. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna get these wires all organized and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so we're gonna remove, uh, cause we got the entire assembly, we're gonna remove all these screws on the outside. We'll try to use this as much as we can. Okay, so we're gonna have to use our 93. Okay, so thankfully the new one came with a new gasket, so we're gonna go ahead and remove this old gasket. So yeah, I'm using my level. bottom screws in there just kind of hold it in place and actually these have holes so I'm going to do this and this will kind of help me hold these this new gasket in place so what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and start these two bottom ones and the idea is it should just slide right on there hold it in place and then I'll go ahead and install the other screws and then it should kind of hold my gasket in place too until I can get everything settled. Just like that. So we got our new blower motor, or our new combustion motor right here. Now we gotta see if we can fish it through all these wires. It should just sit right on top of it. 
top of those two screws I just started. started and we will now put the other screws in place where the other gasket holes are okay so there's one right there okay and then one back here Okay, so we got it all set up. Um, everything's wired and zip tied. So we're gonna go ahead and fire this thing up and see what happens. No, well, that sounds normal. Got ignition. And we look like we're good. So anyway, that's how you diagnose a noisy system uh, we just came out here of a neighbor complaining about a noise and we found a bad inducer draft motor and we replaced it so thanks for watching make sure you like and subscribe comment tell me what a horrible technician i am hit that bell notification and follow me on instagram and facebook thanks for watching